Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at a new tactical katana and uh, my EDC folder update. These are my 10 best recent uh, EDC knives in the in the smaller, like uh, under three and a quarter inch range. We'll take a look at those. And then also Otter Messer uh, from uh, Slippy Flipper. Uh, if you will. So we're going to take a look at all of these things coming up. But first, let's do a little pocket check. I need to uh, warm up here with with a uh, with a showing off, if you will. So today I'm carrying my uh, XM18 Spanto. This was reground by Josh at Razor Edge Cutlery, and it is a veritable straight razor here. Pointy, beautiful. It's got that awesome uh, forward sort of tanto, um, really defined there by the difference between this flat grind here and this hollow grind. I was just dropping it up before we started rolling here. It is really sharp S35EN. Prized, prized knife, especially with that special, uh, I don't know, I kind of love it sometimes, kind of hate it sometimes, um, Python micarta. Right now it's staying on. But I have been eyeing up a purple micarta handle scale that would look cool. But you know what? I don't need to spend that money. So right now, that's what I'm carrying in my front right pocket. Also, I have the SPK Shark. That is the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. This is in crew wear and a really nice natural canvas micarta. Just a nice cutting knife. You can hold it in various ways. It's got a pretty neutral handle here. But the highlight is it's an absolute laser beam right here. It's very, very thin behind the edge, and it cuts like crazy. So I got that on me. And then uh, last but not least, this has been coming in handily uh, the last couple of days. This is my Alox Pioneer X Victorinox. That X, of course, is because you have a pair of scissors present. And the scissors are probably my favorite Victorinox tool. So this is a a classic camp knife configuration with the awl, the bottle opener, the can opener, and the blade. But this time you get the scissors. So I'm a big fan of this. I do wish they would uh, somehow figure out how to put toothpicks and tweezers on these ALOX models. They would be absolutely perfect if you could do that because um, I do miss the... I do miss those uh, those tools, especially the toothpick at lunch at work. So uh, be sure to check out Instagram and uh, go search The Knife Junkie on Instagram. And you can see all sorts of pictures of these knives. Uh, I like to post EDC updates and such. Uh, but also uh, we'll put up uh, some uh, audiograms from the show, from the different interviews. And you can kind of get a preview of what's to come and what's up there. So uh, check us out there. Also, I just wanted to mention a a big thanks to all of the folks that came uh, out and joined us on Saturday, the 21st of August for the birthday bash. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. We gave a lot of stuff away. We had a lot of people commenting and we had some great guests. We had the guys from Finch. We had Laren Thomas. We had Doug Ritter. We had Jared Neve, all of these people donating uh, various giveaway items. And, uh, well, it was a blast. Thank you so much for for, uh, helping me celebrate. I mean, that's what this had. I feel like I'm starting to lose my voice. I've been celebrating quite a bit, you know. It's been uh, three days of podcasts in a row. And uh, I love it. I love talking to all of you, especially uh, in that sort of live stream environment. So birthday bash was, was a bash. Thank you. I will be getting all the, uh, uh, by the time you hear this, everything will be in the mail. So it's all coming to you. Um, well, if you think what we do here is valuable also, please check us out on Patreon. Uh, quickest way to get there is to buy, is to go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. And, uh, you can sign up there and, uh, three, three different tiers of support stickers, exclusive content. Please join us uh, and be a part of that. Knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. 
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Terrain 365, you know them. Um, Patrick Ma heads them up. He used to be uh, head of, uh, oh, wow. Uh, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, he, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that. But uh, Patrick Ma, we spoke to him on this here show. Uh, Terrain 365, they specialize in uh, this dendritic cobalt alloy called um, Teravantium. Uh, we, we all like to say it kind of like that because it is such a cool sounding name, Teravantium, uh, but it is totally rust free. And uh, their knife, the Otter knife, uh, kind of based on the Otter Messer uh, slip joints from Germany, uh, design wise, is uh, in its third iteration now. And it's a double detent slip joint flipper. And they're calling it now an inline flipper instead of a front flipper, which I think is kind of a, a, a nice and more specific way of referring to it. Um, it's not always right up front with the front with the uh, that inline flipper. So it's a it's a good uh, update on the term. If you look at it, it is a Barlow style handle, slight sleeve board handle. Um, you know, of course, a Barlow does have a really large bolster. This one doesn't have a bolster at all, but it's basically the same uh, format. You got a spear point, uh, three inch Teravantium blade like you did on the two others. One was a locking uh, version that came out in June with a regular flipper. And uh, so this one has the double detent system. So it's not locking open, uh, but it's sort of, you know, detented open. So a great uh, sort of third addition to that line of knives, the Otter knives. And uh, yeah, I, I think what Patrick Ma does is very interesting, uh, especially with this, uh, with these fully rust proof knives, rust free knives. So you've got titanium, you've got teravantium and uh, you know, the rest of it is just water dripping off. So uh, definitely look for that. That's coming out, I believe in the month of October. That's Terrain 365 Otter. I'm calling it a slippy flipper. That's kind of corny sounding, but you know what I mean. It's a slip joint, but it's a front flipper. So we look for we look forward to that. Okay, still to come in the state of the collection, I take a look at a knife uh, from a company I had, uh, well, who reached out to me. And then also my EDC folder updates. Now, I feel recently I've gotten a number of really great EDC folders, and I'm starting to appreciate uh, not always having a giant tactical knife right there in your uh, front pocket. So I want to talk about some of these great EDC knives. And uh, well, that's still to come right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Do you like the sound of the alphanumeric combinations M390, 204P, and 20CV, but bristle at 8CR13MOV and AUS-8? You are a knife junkie, probably worse. So I got a, uh, a company reached out to me called K tactical and they sent me this knife and uh, I had a chance to look at it on Instagram. I said, yeah, that'd be great. Send me the knife. And so I'm going to do a review of this. And uh, when I say review, I mean it. Uh, ordinarily, I just do knife close up videos where I show off a knife that has kind of already passed muster for me. Uh, but th this uh, company K tactical sent me a couple of these uh, of, of their tactical Katana folders to kind of suss out. They are new to the knife game and I am happy to give them an honest review. It's got a lot of pros, a couple of, couple of things they could change in the next iteration to uh, please the knife world. And uh, that's how I'm going to approach this, um, this review. I think it's only kind of fair. Uh, it is a pretty cool knife, I got to say, in most regards. My brother was sitting at my desk when he was here visiting and uh, he flipped it open. He was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Uh, he really loved it. He loved how the uh, how the milling in this, I can't tell if it's actual carbon fiber or G10 with carbon fiber laminate, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so he likes how this uh, sort of emulates the handle of a, of a katana, 
the blade shape, of course, is very signature katana. Um, one of the things is identify the blade steel, especially if you're going to have it that satiny, that polished. You know, when it's that polished, it either means a whole lot of handwork has gone, gone into it, or it's sort of chromium coated or something. And I, I can't tell. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, in any case, I think to really break into the knife market these days with serious collectors and serious EDCers, you got to identify your blade steel. So I'll suggest that. And then the only other thing that, that sticks in my uh, craw just a little bit is you see that flipper there. And that's what you get from the flip. I mean, you can't even really preload. Sometimes you can really preload energy into that flipper and make it flip open. There, I did it with just a touch of wrist. But I think that these days, if you have a flipper, people want it to explode open when you just, you know, so on bearings or with a really much better detent, this detent is optimized for a slow roll out with a thumb stud. And if they got rid of this flipper, I'd be 100% fine with it just being a uh, thumb stud knife because it works really well. Uh, it's cool in that it, it also, uh, the blade disappears completely in the handle. And uh, well, look for a full review of this knife. I, I have, uh, I have um, mixed emotions, but mostly positive, let's say that. All right, next up, uh, I have a new role for my Kershaw Launch 9. You know, the little switch blade. So on my keys, this, uh, Recon one, this little mini recon one used to ride on my keys for quite some time. I just replaced it. This is getting fidgety. I, I have to, uh, or a little bit funky in there. I have to take it apart and really clean it. And sometimes it pops open on its own and I'm afraid I'm going to cut myself on it. So I decided Kershaw launch nine on the keys. Why not just remove the, uh, well, I, I, there are a couple of reasons why not, but I'm just trying it out for right now. Yeah, remove the pocket clip, just put it on the ring there. Boom. You'll know when it pops open. I mean, it's got such a strong spring that it really should be uh, easy to detect when it's open. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this ages on the keys. Of course, that's hard anodized aluminum, but as it rubs up against the keys and my little mag light and stuff like that, in the pocket, it will uh, it will wear in a way that I will find pleasing. So yeah, I just wanted to show that off. It's the new it's the new keychain knife. Is that too heavy for a transmission? Uh, I know uh, Nutton Fancy used to say he didn't like stuff on his keys because he was worried about not the transmission but the that key assembly just having too much weight and pulling down on there. Uh, do you think an aluminum knife is that? It might be. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to check it out for a little while and see how that works. And I want to see how that thing wears in. It'll wear in nicely, no doubt. Okay, so lastly, for my birthday, a knife I failed to mention uh, because I hadn't opened it was uh, a friend, an old friend of my uh, wife's, knew that I liked knives, and he got me this Gerber Paraframe. <clears throat> Gerber Paraframe is the is Gerber's most selling knife. I used to have the um, the mini one that I got for 10 bucks and it was a great little knife. I actually gave it to a guy I work with, Steve, the guy who just got me a fishing pole. So I'm gonna start doing that. Uh, but this large para frame, uh, their most selling knife is uh, is interesting. It, it definitely needs a break in. I think it's a uh, really tight and uh, I don't know. I think Gerber has been doing a lot more interesting stuff. This is still their big seller. I'm very pleased to have it as a gift. So thank you, Josh. But it's just interesting kind of observing this uh, when all of their um, upscale knives are kind of, you know, taken off in a way and they're, and they're doing much better things with better materials, but they're, they're still really, you know, making a killing on these kind of roughly put together knives by comparison to the new stuff. So uh, interested to have this. I think it'll be a, um, it will actually probably end up serving me well. I don't mean to turn my nose up at it. Certainly it was a, a great gift, uh, but also, you know, Gerber's are pretty stout and uh, I think this will serve well in the car and in the car it will get used. And, uh, you know, 
that's a lot more than a lot of these other knives that I have here. So Gerber Paraframe, a gift from Josh. Josh, thank you, sir. It's greatly appreciated. I'm going to break this sucker in and, uh, and get, her, get it rolling. You know, you can't do too badly with uh, serrations like that. They will keep you in good stead for a while. All right, so let's get to this EDC folder update. Uh, but first, be sure to go to the knifejunkie.com and check out the videos, the podcasts, and the photos. Each podcast has a number, and you can search just by going to the knifejunkie.com slash and putting that number in. So uh, do that. And uh, also, if you're here on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe, please. Greatly appreciated. All right, EDC folder update. Now, these are our... These are our knives that are somewhat new and really exhibit um, all the great qualities of what an EDC knife should be. And, and what I'm saying is I have a lot of weapony things. I have a lot of, uh, you know, tactical things, but I'm talking more about knives in that under three and a half inch range that just excel at cutting. And, you know, uh, we're not talking about sharpened pry bars. We're not talking about uh, exclusive uh, customs. We are talking about just kind of ideal, ideal EDC knives. Mm. Pardon me for the delicious black coffee. All right, first is the American Blade Works Model 1. This is the version 5. And uh, I think he pretty much maxed it out at the version 6. He got it, got it exactly where he wants it. And the uh, cool thing about this knife is that, and about um, American Blade Works, is that he just strives to um, get exactly what the owner and collector wants. So with each version, with each iteration, he got feedback uh, from, from knife collectors and knife people, reviewers, and kept incorporating it until he got this perfect fully flat ground S35 VN. I think he's now on 20 CV on bearings, just beautifully milled at his place and hand assembled. Just a great knife, very sharp, very capable and pretty neutral. You know, it's like it, it has one of those. I think this is a recurring theme in these uh, knives. I'm going to show like pretty neutral in grip. So you can change it up with this. And uh, yeah, big fan of American Blade Works. Uh, check out the version six. There are a number of videos out there now on that one. This next one is from Russia. And man, is this a cool knife. This is the uh, Aurora by Crystal Knives. Again, uh, imported uh, by Knife Nuts, uh, Levan of the Knife Nuts podcast. He now brings in all these great Russian knives. Um, Dave, this old sword blade reviews has a bunch of them. And, uh, this model in particular is just beautiful with that fuller and it is so sharp. It's a pretty stout blade stock here, but it loses a lot of girth right in here and, uh, behind the edge, you know, where this fuller is behind the edge, it is super sharp, much thinner than if it were just a flat grind there. So I think this was a hollow grind that was then scooped out and made even even more uh, keen. Uh, beautiful sort of milling and jimping on the sides. Help you extract this blade from your pocket. You've got uh, yeah, milling right there and right there. Just a great knife with great action. Pops out, but it has a nice hydraulic feel on the close. That's something I've talked about a bit. It's got a more of an old school feel on the close, and I love that. So that's the Crystal Aurora. That's been one of my favorite EDCs, especially during the summer, because it's nice and light in shorts. It does great, and man, it's going to take care of anything uh, that you need to cut, much like this next one. This is the uh, TRM Atom. Of course, I got this one a couple of weeks back. I've been really loving both of these knives, uh, but just a great EDC in that it's thin and light, really sharp, and then you can have fun with it with these scales, you know, you can swap out scales. I have three different, let's see. So including this, I have four different sets of scales and, um, you know, you can just always keep updating and they do exclusives like this, uh, 
GL Hansen and Son G. Curtis Gale. I got some food juice on it the other night, which I'm kind of regretting, but you know, in time it'll all be it'll it'll funkify a bit. So yeah, love these TRM atoms. Now I just saw they just came out with the release of the Neutron, which is the smaller version of this. And um so now they are running through uh, a, a series of G Carta scales for the neutron. So if you're a neutron owner, you love it, you wanna you wanna kind of up your game a little bit with your scales, get some GL Hansen and Sons um, G Carta. Just go to their website. Hopefully it's still on by the time you hear this. All right, next. One of the hit hit knives of the summer, the AD 20.5 uh, from Demco Knives. And uh, manufactured in Taiwan, um, costs about 115 bucks. That's OS 10, OS 10 steel there. Just great action on bearings, and then you have the Shark Lock, which uh, I got one for my brother. Uh, you know, I've been showing that one off. He finally collected it this past weekend. It's now with him, and. Uh, I can still hear it flipping open. Even though he's not here anymore, I can still hear it. I was like, oh, I know where my brother is. This thing is awesome. So fidgety, so thin and slicey. And compared to the AD20, which I love, of course, it is svelte. This is summer shorts for sure. Nice and light with that grivery. Uh, people have been dyeing them and... Uh, to great effect. I just, a uh, gentleman just sent me one. He dyed it red, candy apple red, I think, and then mixed with that gray, it came out to a really nice sort of burgundy, which is kind of a color I've been into handle-wise uh, these days. So very much, very much loving the AD 20.5. Here is the Ritter Hogue Mini RSK1. Uh, this is probably the the best iteration of that uh, uh, axis style lock of course they call theirs the able lock the uh, ambidextrous bar lock enhanced able lock so same action as the as the uh, axis lock from benchmade but a different spring I guess a more trusty robust string uh, spring never had issues with my uh, benchmades uh, in that way with the Omega spring. So I can't really speak to that, but this is supposed to be vastly improved in terms of the spring. But I'll tell you in terms of the action and, and having this sort of action with a 100% like unmoving blade, it's pretty impressive. Hogue knives. And now they have uh, uh, released the large size version in this purple G Mascus. So I'm happy to see that. I had the large uh, with the black G10 and ended up uh, giving that one away. So uh, I'm I'm in I'm in need of a full size. It may as well be a purple G Mascus. Mm. Uh, let's see. So next, the Rock Wall. Yes, that's right. By Tactile Knives, the Rock Wall. What a great little knife. Now, this one uh, was sent to me by the company. So this was before they went major on their um, production. And then they had a, uh, a waiting list. My dad got on that waiting list after uh, the interview with the guys from Tactile Knives. And uh, he got on the list. He was 1,074, and he just got his knife uh, a couple of weeks back. So uh, it was cool. They were here visiting, and uh, he was carrying his tactile the whole time. Now, he had me loosen the clip, and I ended up bending it too far. So I had to disassemble the knife to take the clip out and uh, fix it and put it all back together. And I didn't realize that this is on IKBS bearings. So not the bearing pivots uh, with the bearings impregnated in the washers that you can easily uh, pick up and move around, but just loose bearings in a, in a, tri in a race excuse me, milled into the inside of the handle. And oh my God, I almost had a heart attack. I thought I thought I had lost some, uh, some of the bearings, but luckily I have this sort of material uh, right here in front of me that captured them. And I was able to put my dad's knife back together. And incidentally, he said it works even better than before. What do you know? 
So uh, I think maybe what had happened in the process is I think I may have rubbed some coagulated lubricant off of these tiny little um, uh, bearings in moving them. And in doing so, made it work just a little bit smoother. That's the kind of, that's the feeling I have. Next is a gift from patron Mr. Filato, just an awesome guy with an amazing collection. He sent me a bunch of knives, including those Winklers I was showing off the other day. And um, in it was this Millet Perpetua. And I had been talking about this knife with Josiah of Millet, talking about how this is the one that got away from me. And Mr. Heard, me, heard that, and he sent this to me and uh, gave it to me as a birthday gift. And wow, what a great EDC knife this is. It's got this amazing blade shape, first of all. It's got a nice acute point, but it's not that menacing. It's got a full belly. It's, it's uh, hollow ground, and it reminds me a little bit of the Insingo, and it's a, that's a blade shape that has always appealed to me. And it's perfect for utility. This was the first legal uh, version of the Axis Lock after the patent from Bench, Benchmade's patent expired. Uh, Drop was the distributor. Millet was the manufacturer. TJ Schwartz was the designer. And uh, this knife was the first non-Benchmade Axis Lock legally produced. So kind of a cool little... A tidbit. This is the version two of this knife. And I hope uh, in uh, Millet's effort to um, expand its own roster of its own designs that it's making, I really hope they bring this back out and they do titanium and they do all sorts of stuff with it because it is an awesome design. And people say things like Griptilian Killer. Uh, and I would say yes. There you go. I've said it. All right. Next is the off grid knives. Cayman EDC. This thing is an unlikely in this list for me, only because it is the one blacked out. It is the one very ergonomic handle uh, knife here, and it doesn't really follow in uh, in some of the some of the qualities of these other knives. To me, this is so menacing. That blade shape, this crazy clipped. Uh, Bowie shape. It looks actually like a Cayman crocodile in profile to me. And uh, it has such an excellent ergonomic grip. It fits my hand perfectly. It's a pretty broad shaped handle, so it's not going to turn in your hand at all. It's got the one choil. I like just one choil for my fingers. And in reverse grip, it just melts into your hand. Um, but <laughs> all of that being said, it's got a very thinly ground, very useful blade. It's D2 blade steel. I think they cryo treat all their D2 uh, with off grid. You've got really amazing action. I mean, it took it took no time at all for this to break in. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to when the blade is coated, you have to sort of wear in the track where the bearings run. But in this case, it took about 20 flippings, and it was just smooth as can be. Uh, really like this knife. Deep carry pocket clip. This this one rides in the car a lot. So therefore, it ends up getting popped in the pocket last minute a lot. And uh, well, it lives up, up to its name. It is called the Cayman EDC. Uh, I might point out to you that if you look in here, it is highly skeletonized. So it, it looks like kind of like a bridge on the inside. So it's sturdy and rigid without uh, too much added weight. Uh, even though the size is a little bit bigger. All right, so last two. Oh, man. Two big ones of the last season. This next one I got at Blade Show and is mm, 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 such an amazing knife, the Vero Synapse. Just everything from its design, that awesome flipper tab that is just barely protruding from the... Uh, from this Ricasso area, just ah, oh, pops it open so nicely. The action on this is just amazing. So it flips out great and then just drops back on you. Of course, this has that natural canvas micarta and um, uh, titanium bolsters. It's a bolster lock. Um, my one thing about this is the 
is the high ramp on that clip. I could see if you were using it for a long time in certain grips, you would feel it be a hot spot. But for how I use this and how an EDC knife uh, of this stature is supposed to be used, that clip shouldn't be much of an issue. But if it is, know that his latest uh, iterations of all of his knives, I think, now have a little downward turn to the front of that sort of high clip ramp there. Just a pleasure, a pleasure to have in pocket. <laughs> that sounds so corny. But yeah, just an awesome, awesome knife. And last, uh, from our good friends over at Finch, Finch Knife Company, this is the Holiday. And uh, it is named after Doc Holiday, the uh, famous Western character. That's why you'll find two L's in the word holiday. And uh, I love this thing. It is, um, when we spoke with uh, Spencer, he was saying that the shape of the handle was based on the old doctor's knife, uh, a slip joint that frequently has a long spear point blade and then a long, thin sort of spatuloid blade that you use to stir up potions and stuff. And then it would have this, uh, this back end bolster would be totally flat and rectangular. And that is so that you could grind up medication. So imagine a doctor shows up on a house call back in the, back in the day. And he's like, mm, I'm going to have to make you uh, a tincture of something or other. He pulls out a little tablet. He grinds it up using the flat of his blade here, the, the uh, tail end, the pommel, which is optimized for grinding pills. And then he opens up uh, the blade, say, and then uh, scrapes it into place, opens up the little spatula blade, scoops it up, puts it in the uh, potion, stirs it up, boom, there you have it. So it's it's based on the doctor knife with that square shape. I, I love the whole concept of that knife. Um, and I love how this thing is shaped, uh, especially with that worn cliffy blade. Now I say worn cliffy because it's, to me, it's sort of sheep's foot in that it has a gradual slope down from the spine, but it also has a pretty aggressive tip like a Warren Cliff, so it doesn't seem, I don't know. What do you think this is? Let me know. Well, you call the listener line, 724-466-4487, and let me know, is this a Warren Cliff or is this a sheep's foot with a nice uh, point there? I don't know, but I love this knife, and the guys from Finch are great. I love their sort of... Uh, uh, modern take on these older designs and then of course the loom the luminous action there you can sort of see uh but uh because steve laughlin half of the group has the raven watch company they put this uh seal on every one of their knives this uh, little shield and it's luminous and it has a sapphire crystal on top just like a watch so kind of a cool little detail these are the kind of people we have on the show. And uh, well, it's great to have, actually we've had a number of the people who have uh, brought these to us on the show. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, all of them. So that's kind of cool. All right, anyway, uh, that's what you come to the Knife Junkie Podcast for, to hear these great interviews with people uh, that are making this whole hobby uh, possible, make it happen. Uh, so check us out every, uh, every Sunday for one of those podcasts. And then uh, you can check out the liner notes for this show in uh, theknifejunkie.com slash 245. And then coming up, we have J.B. Stout. Uh, he's coming up this coming Sunday, episode 246. J.B. Stout, Jason Stout, awesome knife maker. Uh, he's responsible for the lateralis and the leviathan and the recent omerta uh, by Boker Knives. So definitely check it out. He's a great guy quite a character, and it was great to talk to him and find out how he does what he does. Also, uh, be sure to uh, join us Thursday Night Knives for our live live stream, and it's awesome. We get to talk to you through the comments. We get to talk to you when you just log on and uh, camera next to camera. We get to meet virtually. It's been great. So join us, and uh, we'll make your, uh, your, your viewing time worth its while. All right. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.